Um, we're going to lay down to get started. So, well, hi, Michelle. Oh, hey. nice. Ian. Yeah, we're going to lay down to get started. And I guess we'll turn the music on right away. That feels like the thing to do. Um, oh, I changed my mind. Let's not turn them on right away. <laughs> Let's like give ourselves a moment. I had something I wanted to read and I'm pretty sure the first song has words. So, um, so yeah, just get yourself settled, laying down on your back in your favorite sort of position. And it might be nice to, um, to get started in a restorative bridge pose with the block underneath your pelvis. Um, or maybe if you, especially if you've been like sitting at a desk, <laughs> or something like that for a lot of the day, and you've been rounding forward, it might be nice to roll up a blanket and place it underneath um, your spine so that you get a little bit more of this. Yeah. Great, just starting off in silence, allowing yourself a chance to, um, to just be at peace for a moment. Great. Sometimes there's all kinds of sensory input and it can disturb the peace a bit. Great, so just allowing ourselves to kind of step away for a moment. And I was just saying to Juliana, um, happy one year of doing yoga on Zoom, yoga at home. I'm uh, just beyond grateful that you all wanna do this. So thank you. All right. Let your body just settle into the ground, into the floor. And take notice of the temperature of the air. Those ambient sounds of your home, whatever they might be, just let them come to your ears. Mm. Good. And just notice the way the breath enters and exits your body, almost as if you're opening up some windows, <laughs> maybe into a room that's been closed up for a minute, letting in a little bit of fresh air. And so I just wanted to read you a poem, a David White poem. I feel like I'm just on a David White kick these days. <laughs> Every now and then it happens. This one is called The House of Belonging. I awoke this morning in the gold light, turning this way and that, thinking for a moment it was one day like any other. But the veil had gone from my darkened heart and I thought it must have been the quiet candlelight that filled my room. It must have been the first easy rhythm with which I breathed myself to sleep. It must have been the prayer I said, speaking to the otherness of the night. And I thought, this is the good day you could meet your love. This is the great day someone close to you could die. This is the day you realize how easily the thread is broken between this world and the next. And I found myself sitting up in the quiet pathway of light the tawny closed grain cedar burning around me like fire and all the angels of this housely heaven ascending through the first roof of light the sun has made. This is the bright home in which I live. This is where I ask my friends to come. This is where I want to love all the things that has taken me so long to learn to love. This is the temple of my adult aloneness and I belong to that aloneness as I belong to my life. There is no house like the house of belonging. Mm. All right, and so here on your back, so oh, if you do have your music close by and you want to press play, you might do that. We're still going to hang out on our backs though, so yeah, as you, um, as you turn your music on, you come right back down and we're just going to place our hands on top of our head, right up on the crown of our head. You can have your legs extended long or your knees can be bent. There's really like no wrong answer, but maybe you're taking your hands, fingers interlaced and sort of pressing into the top of your head, or you might decide to just give yourself like a nice gentle massage on the crown of your head. You 
maybe even like dragging your fingernails along your scalp a little bit gently. Okay, you might decide to massage a little over to the right and a little over to the left. <laughs> Just giving yourself a nice little head rub. Mm, good. Good. And then from here, you can either um, just keep your head on the floor or you can take a block underneath your head. We're going to rock the head side to side a little bit. So maybe the block presses into um, the base of the skull. We're getting into those pressure points where we hold a lot of tension. Good. And just moving slowly, let's rock back and forth for like a good minute or so. Good. And your eyes can be open and maybe the room is coming to you slowly and softly, or maybe your eyes are closed. <sighs> Good, another two breaths or so. Hmm. All right, and then if you happen to have a block underneath your head, you can just take it away and send it out long. Send your legs out nice and long. And let's point and flex the feet a few times. Maybe roll the ankles around just a couple times. Really feeling the soles of your feet. Good. Good. And then let's flex the feet deeply, like your toes are kind of pulling back up towards your nose. And then we're just going to press the hands out. So the palms are reaching up for the ceiling. Good. Maybe you're rotating the wrist a few times. Good. It's almost like a little plank on your back. Feel your belly muscles and feel your shoulders and what they're doing here. Good, let's pull that left knee in towards the chest. Relax the right foot. Just a little bit of like an opening through the hip here. Maybe you're rocking the knees side to side. Good, and then we'll take a little twist, dropping that left knee across the midline. Maybe that right leg stays long, or maybe you decide to bend that knee too. Great, focusing in on the way your belly feels, your back, your shoulders. Good, and then bring yourself back through to the center. Keep that left knee in for a moment and just hover your right leg above the floor. So maybe like an inch or so, just holding it up there. Good, we're gonna switch them out, bring the right knee in towards the chest, let that left leg hover for a second. Good, and then go ahead and set that left leg down and pull the right knee in and just do your thing. Maybe it's a little rocking. Maybe you wanna hold still. Good, another breath. All right, and then let's take that twist, dropping your right knee across the midline. Good, reach out through that right arm, maybe. Good, notice how things feel in between your lower ribs and the top of your pelvis.
Good, and then very slowly bring yourself back through to the center. Keep that right knee in, hover the left leg again. And then we're just gonna switch them out a little bit. And really your arms can be doing any old thing. <laughs> Anything works. Just kicking one leg long and then the other leg long. Maybe you're taking your hands back behind your head, <laughs> like dude arms, yeah. Good, a few more breaths. All right, knees to chest. And a little rock from side to side here. Mm, nice, soles of the feet will come down to the mat. Let's lift the hips and take a bridge pose. Good, roll that spine back down. Extend both of your legs out long. <sighs> Good, and then let's slide the heels over to the left and the upper body too for a little bit of like a banana. Good, maybe like five breaths or so in the right side of your waist. To that right shoulder. Mm. Good, slide yourself right on over to the other side, as fluid as possible. Good, bringing those heels off to the right. Good, notice how the left side of your belly feels. Good, and your left shoulder. Good, one more breath. All right, bring yourself back through to the center. And from here, we're gonna pull the knees in towards the chest and lift up the head. Good, trying to peel the shoulders away from the floor maybe. And then we're gonna do that same pressing out with the hands. So knees up onto your elbows, palms press, yeah, good. Try not to clench your jaw here. Good, and then back to bridge pose. Soles of the feet come down, hips lift up. Good, and then take your time here. We're just gonna roll along the length of the spine a couple times. And I'm thinking of a, some boat action. <laughs> so really it can be any kind of boat. <laughs> Think of your favorite boat. Maybe it's like a little canoe or a kayak. Maybe it's like, I don't know, you want to get on a boat and then get out of the US and go across the ocean. Who knows? But just taking a moment, and right? your hands could stay in your legs, might reach up. Good. If you're in your boat, just a couple more breaths. Mm, perfect, and then let's come up onto hands and knees. And finding your hands and knees, it might be blanket time over <laughs> under your knees. Good, and here, let's just come onto hands and knees and think about keeping the back of your body kind of straight and long, but let your belly drop. Right? It's harder than it sounds. <laughs> yeah, so without really rounding the spine, just let the belly relax. Notice your breath. Good, and then feel your belly lifting and kind of engaging here. Good. With your fingertips pointing forward, begin to just bend the elbows slightly. So your elbows are coming kind of to tap the sides of your rib cage maybe. Just moving forward and back a few times. Good, notice how the belly feels. Maybe you're coming up under the knees, pointing the toes up. 
Maybe you're dipping down close to the floor, maybe not. And you let your wrists kind of call the shots here. Good, a couple more breaths. And then start to give your spine a little wiggle, do all the things that you like to do. Good, a few more breaths worth of your wiggles. Good, and then we'll sit back on the heels. And as you find the heels, let's interlace the fingers in front of you and just kind of swim the hands around a little bit. Good, getting into your wrists. And if you're taking those figure eights, kind of swiveling the hands around, take that figure eight in the other direction too. Let the other hand be dominant for a second. Good, just a couple more breaths worth of the wrist action. Good, and then let your arms just kind of swing alongside you. Good, a few breaths like this. Notice how your fingers feel. Good, and then well, I think we'll use our strap next. That seems like the logical next step. So just grab a hold of um, your strap, your scarf, whatever you have nearby. And we're just gonna take the strap in your hand so that your hands are maybe just a little bit wider than your shoulders. And I'm thinking of this, I'm thinking of just bringing it up and over and then back around, making it as wide as it has to be for that to happen. Okay, you can keep doing this kind of like straightforward movement up and over, or you can always like throw in a little intuitive something or other. Like maybe you want to toss in a back bend or a side bend, you can wiggle around. And just exploring those shoulders. And a few more breaths. Mm, good. And then when you're ready, just go ahead and set that strap down. And we'll sit here for just a moment. Notice how your shoulders feel. Things feel a little funky in your head and neck. You might take a little roll. Chin towards the chest. Maybe a little lion's breath here too, just for laughs. Breathing in through the nose, nice and calm. Exhaling to stick out your tongue and cross your eyes. Mm, good. And then let's move back onto hands and knees. As you find hands and knees, tuck the toes, lift the knees just a little bit. And we're going to kind of spring forward and then stretch back into down dog and do that a few times, springing forward and stretching back. Maybe your knees come back down to the ground, maybe they hover. Good. Just a couple more breaths. Good, and then go ahead and settle your knees down onto the mat, on the blanket. And we're gonna take a child's pose for a couple breaths. It's not too long. Good, as you inhale, slide the heart in between the hands, take your low cobra. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Good, a couple deep breaths here. And you feel your heels drop down and your toes lift up. Good, as you inhale, look in between the hands. Exhale, move the feet up to the top of the mat. Forward fold. Inhale, come all the way up, reach nice and high. Exhale, hands to the heart. Good. Interlace your hands, and we're gonna take the hands back behind the head so the elbows are out wide as you're standing up. And think about creating a little triangle with your elbows in the top of your head. Good, feel your thighs kind of lift. 
Low belly engage. Good, feet press into the ground. Good, exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your palms and step it on back to high plank or plank with the knees down. Good, and we're just gonna drop the hips over to the right and over to the left. A Couple of times to wake up the sides of the belly. It's almost like half plank, yeah, or side plank. You can go there if you want to. Good, eventually make your way through your flow, coming back into child's pose. Good, from your child's pose, we're gonna roll up onto the top of the head to rabbit. Good, so just bringing the top of your head to the mat, maybe it's on a blanket. And if you have any like major C-spine issues, you don't have to go here at all. You can remain in child's pose. Good. Okay, just feeling the top of the head pressing down. Shoulders sort of lifting. Great, back to child's pose. Inhale, slide the heart through in between the hands. Keep your cobra. Maybe it's a bigger cobra now. Great. Exhale back, downward dog. Good. Let your head drop. Relax your tongue, your jaw, your eyes. Good. Breathe in. Look in between the hands. And then exhale. Come on up to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Take the hands and interlace them and bring them back behind your head. Good, let, let your elbows sort of hang down. And then very slowly bend those knees. Start to come all the way back up to standing, creating that sort of upside down headstand. Just standing strong at your feet. Kneecaps and thighs lift. Notice the length in your neck. Good, maybe a tiny back bend here, just for ha-ha's. <laughs> Good, and then exhale, and just fold yourself forward. Good, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your palms, take it through your flow, whatever that is today. Mm, yeah, eventually we'll end up back in child's pose. <sighs> mm. Good, when you find child's pose, rock your head from side to side, let your brow kind of soften into the mat. <sighs> nice. If you would like to roll back up into your rabbit shape, you might bring your hips above your knees. This time, maybe you um, interlace the hands behind your back and press your knuckles up, or grab a hold of your heels and get a nice stretch through the inside of your shoulder blades. Yeah, good, whatever works. Your hands to the floor. Good, with all inversions, like you generally know when, you, when time is up, <laughs> when you're done. So feel free to come back into your child's pose once you hit that point. Good, reconnect with a sense of ease. Good, and then when you're ready, slide your heart through in between your hands, take your cobra, your upper dog. Yup, nice, exhale back, downward facing dog. Good, and a few deep breaths, letting the head drop way down. Good. Pick up your gaze, look to the top of the mat, and then bring your feet there. Good. When you get there, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold forward. Give your arms a little wiggle, a little shake. And maybe your feet are a little bit wider on the mat, and you're swinging the upper body a little bit from side to side. And eventually finding center. Really folding in on yourself here as best as you can. 
Good, and then interlace your hands back behind your head again. Really slowly roll yourself all the way up to standing, your elbows and your head, crown of your head, form that triangle, back of the neck long. And notice the firmness in your shoulders. Or you notice the structure. Good, notice the engagement of your belly, your glutes. Good. Another big breath, little tiny back bend. Good, exhale, sit down into chair pose. And your chair pose, just a couple of breaths to get as low as you can. And maybe lower than you're comfortable with. And then very slowly fold yourself. Good, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your palms. Come back into high plank and we're gonna drop both heels off to the right. Hey, if you want a side plank, you're welcome to. If you wanna keep that left hand down, you're welcome to. Choice is yours. Good, bring yourself back through to the center. And then we're gonna step that right foot forward and raise the right arm up. Make your twist. And bring that right hand down. Stake that right foot all the way to the back of the mat, high plank. Go ahead, lower the knees, come through your flow. Back into child's pose. And maybe three or four breaths here in child's pose. Good. From here, slide the heart through in between the hands. Take your low cobra, your big cobra. Exhale back, downward dog. Good. Look in between your hands. Step your feet on up to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift, and really reach those arms back behind you. You feel your triceps engage and kind of roll in. Good, fold yourself forward, Uttanasana. You might grab a hold of your big toes. Good, and then very slowly start to roll yourself all the way up to standing. Reach your arms out nice and long. Press your palms up towards the ceiling. Good, feel the soles of your feet pressing into the floor. Go ahead and sit down into chair. Sit down maybe a little lower, maybe. Good, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step it on back. And let's drop the heels over to the left this time. Your right hand might stay down or pick up. Good, one more breath. Back through the center. Good, so from here we're gonna step the right foot forward. Oh no, the left foot forward, my mistake. <laughs> and let's take our twist. So the left hand will reach up, right hand's gonna stay down. Good. Yeah, press back through that right heel. All right, let's set that left hand down and come forward into a squat. And just take a little swing from side to side here. I have a block under my hands. That might be nice. Good, getting low to the ground. And if it feels right to kind of fold in here, you might give yourself a moment with that, dropping your head down. Here you notice the upper back, back of the neck. 
Good. And then let's take the hands down to the floor. And maybe you're taking like a little froggy hop back <laughs> into your plank. Maybe you're stepping back one foot at a time. Eventually, you're going to just roll through your flow and come back into downward facing dog. <laughs> Good. All right, as you inhale, raise your right leg up and back behind you. Exhale, step that right foot forward. And let's take a pyramid pose. Just a nice, easygoing little pyramid guy. Make sure those left toes are more or less pointing forward. Good. And notice your pelvis here. Good. How does the right hip feel? Good. You might decide to balance a little bit by wrapping your hands around both of your legs. And maybe another two or three breaths in your pyramid. Good. And then if you have the bind, release it. We're going to softly bend that right knee and just come up to standing on that right leg or right foot. Oops. Good. And we're going to move around a little bit. Right. So much of being able to practice a headstand is having balance and really honing your writing reflex. So it's kind of trying to throw yourself off a little bit here, like nothing too wild, but you know, just see what you can do. Good. All right, and eventually you'll just set both of your feet down to the mat. Take your hands to your low back, a little bit of a back bend. Good, fold yourself forward. And inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your palms, find your flow through. Good, a couple breaths here. Good, okay, so extend that left leg nice and long behind you, hold it up. Good, and then step it through in between your hands, just find your pyramid shape. Good, hopping that right foot in a bit. And just getting situated. And then maybe taking that bind if it's something you enjoy practicing. Both of your arms wrapping around you. Good, kind of clasping behind that right thigh. Just a couple more breaths here in Pyramid. And if you have that bind, go ahead and drop the hands and softly bend that left knee and just come to stand up and find some of that weird and wacky balancing movement. Right, remember to lean side to side and front to back, off to the angles. Just go where you can. It's okay if you have to put that right foot down. Good, just another couple breaths. Good, and then set that right foot down. Hands come to the lower back, standing camel. Let that head drop back, chin up. Good, exhale, fold forward. Good, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your palms and just flow through. Good. So from your down dog, hmm, couple of options. 
You can come down into child's pose and roll up onto the crown of your head into a rabbit again. Or you might decide to take a dolphin pose here, bringing your elbows down. Um, a little bit of a shoulder opener, a chest opener. And it's a nice little prep for a headstand as well. Yeah. If you're in that dolphin pose with your hips lifted, good. Think about looking down in between your forearms. Just notice how that feels. And then drop your head and notice how that feels. Let's take it a moment. Observe your shoulders and your neck. Good. All right, and eventually we'll all find our way back into downward facing dog again. Good, as you get to your downward dog, inhale that right leg up and back behind you. And just think about creating angles here. So really long, straight right leg, arms long and straight, good. Good, and then step that right foot in between your hands. Hop the left foot in about halfway for pyramid again. And how about a revolve triangle pose? So your left hand will stay down, I think. Yep, left hand is gonna stay down. And the right hand might come to your lower back. Right, it might reach up towards the ceilings, whatever works. Good, press into both of your feet. Good, one more breath here. Go ahead and drop that right hand down. Softly bend that right knee. And we're just gonna kind of float ourselves into an eagle uh, pose here. So that left thigh on top of the right. And then do whatever you need to do with the arms. So maybe they're out wide <laughs> to try to keep your balance. Hands might be together at the heart or you could even wrap the arms too, left arm under the right. Good, notice the space between your pelvis and your little ribs. Make it bigger. Good, and now make it smaller, folding in. Good, fly those arms back behind you. Unwind that left leg, step the left toes all the way back. Good, inhale, arms reach up. Good, and as you exhale, we're gonna turn and squat into Skandasana, left knee bends. Good, right leg long. Good, and you can stay upright here. If you want to fold into it, you're welcome to do that too. Good, and slowly start to walk your hands back around to the top of the mat. Just make your way through your flow, any old flow. Just a couple of breaths when you get to your down dog, your child's pose. Good. And then from your downward dog, extend that left leg up and back behind you. Good. Exhale to step the left foot forward. Find your pyramid legs. And then maybe revolve triangle if it suits you. That right hand can stay down and the left hand can come to your lower back or maybe even reach out. Right. But noticing the base of this. Right heel presses back, left big toe forward. Nice. Yeah, beautiful everybody, another breath. Hmm, good, go ahead and set that left hand down and then gently bend that left knee and kind of just float yourself up <laughs> or step yourself up, finding your um, eagle pose. So wrapping that right leg over the left, right thigh over the left. Do anything you wanna do with your upper body here. <laughs> Maybe your eagle wrapping with the right arm underneath. Maybe your arms are alongside, yeah, or even up. Hmm. Good, and then 
Yeah, very slowly. You're going to unwind your arms and reach them back alongside you. Unwind the legs, step the right toes back. Awesome balance. Yeah, good. Reach those arms up, take a big stretch. Exhale, plant those palms back down. Make your way through your flow. Hmm. All right. So I think if we're gonna do a headstand, <laughs> now would be the time. But um, let me talk you all through it, I guess. Maybe that, yeah, maybe we'll all do it together in like a prescribed kind of way. <laughs> so let's just come to sit up on our heels or wherever, um, just so that you have access to the top of your head. And then take your hand and just place the heel of your hand right at your third eye point and just set your hand down <laughs> so that your fingers kind of come around your head. And just try to notice where your middle finger is, where the pad of your middle finger is. Right? And that's like roughly where you're gonna wanna place your head on the ground. So too far forward and you're gonna really crunch your neck, too far back and you're gonna roll. All right, so looking to find the very top of your head, just about there. All right, and then we're gonna do this other thing, which is set ourselves up. Um, I've been enjoying using like a little bit of a blanket underneath my head recently, but maybe that's not ideal for you. Um, I have a lot of control in my headstand, so a little bit of squishiness doesn't bother me. Maybe you want a harder surface though. Okay, we're gonna set ourselves up for um, first your Shasana A. So we're gonna take our hands to our elbows. Good, and just place the elbows on the floor. Good, and then take your hands apart from your elbows and then interlace your hands here. And if you take a look at your hands, it should look like you can maybe like sit a golf ball in there, something like that size. Okay, your thumbs will interlace. And then just take the very top of your head to the floor. So this is the first step here, having your hips lifted, your elbows and the heel or the uh, pinky edge of your hand pressing down. All right, press your elbows into the ground. Notice the shoulders lifting. That's super critical. All right, if you feel like it, you might take your knees up, kind of walk your toes towards the rest of you. Bring your hips up and above your uh, shoulders. Uh, this is where you might stay. <laughs> or you might decide to lift one leg or both legs. All right, the choice is yours. Are you really focusing in on the elbows and forearms pressing into the ground? Good. And maybe we'll drop the knees kind of wide, sit back in child's pose, wrap the head side to side. Good. A couple breaths. Good. and then just come to sit up again. And just take a moment here to drop your head to this side, into that side. Good. Let's bring the head back to center and stick out your tongue, take a little lion's breath. Good, stand up on the knees, hands to the low back, camel pose, head drops back. Good. And then slowly sit the hips back towards the heels. And we'll just practice maybe one more variation of headstand, a tripod. So in a tripod, the most important thing is that you have like, again, that nice, perfect triangle. If your hands are too close to your head, that's not like a big stable base. You want to have a nice base here. So hands will come down and then your head will come down. <laughs> your elbows are ideally somewhere above your wrists, like right above your wrists. And yeah, you might bring your toes a little closer to the rest of you. Maybe you sit your knees on your elbows. All right, just take a few breaths. Maybe these are things you try. Or it could be knees to the ground, crown of the head on the floor. Uh, just a few breaths in and out. And eventually you'll bring the knees back down if they're lifted. And just rock your head side to side again. Make your whole body move side to side. Good. 
Then slowly come back up to sit on your heels, hands on your thighs. And just a thought that um, a hero's pose might be nice next. So maybe there's a block or a blanket underneath your pelvis. Your heels are just a little bit wider than your hips. This is a nice place to stay. Good. Or you might decide to walk your hands back behind you, pick up your pelvis and point your tailbone in between your knees. Yeah, you might lay all the way down if you've got that kind of movement, range of motion in your body. You might stay lifted, drop the head back. Again, sticking out the tongue if it feels like you need to or want to. Good. If you are reclining, just take a moment to lift yourself back up. And if you have a block or blanket underneath you, we might keep them close by. So we're just going to come to our seat. Let's take a butterfly pose here. So butterfly with the soles of the feet together and maybe far away from you. Or if you prefer Baddha Konasana with your seat really close to your heels, that's your another option. And we'll just fold ourselves in here. Good. Good. And maybe just another few breaths here in your butterfly or your bound angle. Good. And then let's come back up and extend that left leg out long. So the right foot to the inside line of the left leg. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. <sighs> Good. One more breath here. Wow. Great. And as you sit yourself up, think about maybe grabbing your left big toe with your right peace sign fingers. And we're going to cross that left knee on top of the right. And maybe you extend that right leg out long because eventually we're going to do that anyway. But a little twist here your right elbow to your left knee. Maybe it's a prayer twist. Good. Another breath or two. Mm -hmm. Nice. And come back through to the center. And we're just going to see if we can rearrange our legs without using our hands. <laughs> so tipping back into something bony, <laughs> extending that right leg long, and then the sole of the left foot to the inside line of the right leg. Good. Inhale, raise those arms up. Exhale, fold over your right leg. Good, one more breath here. 
And then you grab a hold of your big toe, maybe with your left peace sign fingers. Just begin to sit up and cross that right knee over the left, maybe extending your um, left leg out long. So finding your shoelaces here. And then maybe a little twist. <laughs> maybe sitting up tall, or maybe that prayer twist. And a few more breaths. Good, and then slowly bring yourself back through to the center. We're gonna do that same thing where we tip back. Okay, and unwind the legs, but then this time we're gonna take a wide angle or another butterfly if you prefer that. Good, and maybe you wanna take a block as you fold forward, rest your forearms on it, your thumbs to the inner ridges of your eye sockets. <laughs> And maybe your fingertips rest on the top of your head and you give yourself that little massage again. Or maybe you just fold all the way forward and let your head rest or hang there. Good, just a few more breaths folding in. Good. And then your choice, you can just kind of slowly sit up and then roll all the way under your back in a really easy going way. Or if you feel like taking one final boat situation on your way down, yeah, I'm not gonna stop you. <laughs> maybe, maybe you want to. Good. But yeah, eventually finding your back. And um, I think this is kind of free for all time here, honestly. If you want to take um, a couple of poses before you close your practice, you're welcome to maybe twist or a bridge or a wheel or a shoulder stand, legs up. Maybe you're just ready to be still. And there's roughly like six minutes remaining just for frame of reference. Yeah, good. Good, releasing yourself into rest when it feels like the right time. Good, right. yeah, and maybe you're getting cozy since we're having a little resurgence of the cold. <laughs> Blanket on your belly for some grounding. Maybe you want to place something across your eyes, <laughs> block out some of the light. <sighs> Yeah, 
And you're moving from this external into the internal, into your inner landscape, into your body, which is your home. And watching your breath come and go. Mm, all right, so maybe your breaths get a little bit bigger here. A little bit broader, a little bit longer. Okay, and maybe some small movements or something a little bit bigger if you're feeling it to wake yourself up from your practice. I'm just going to read this poem again as we all come up to a seat eventually. The House of Belonging uh, by David White. I awoke this morning in the gold light, turning this way and that, thinking for a moment it was one day like any other. But the veil had gone from my darkened heart, and I thought it must have been the quiet candlelight that filled my room. It must have been the first easy rhythm with which I breathed myself to sleep. It must have been the prayer I said, speaking to the otherness of the night. And I thought, this is the good day you can meet your love. This is the gray day someone close to you could die. 
This is the day you realize how easily the thread is broken between this world and the next. And I found myself sitting up in the quiet pathway of light, the tawny close grained cedar burning around me like fire and all the angels of this housely heaven ascending through the first roof of light the sun has made. This is the bright home in which I live. This is where I ask my friends to come. And this is where I want to love all the things that has taken me so long to learn to love. This is the temple of my adult aloneness and I belong to that aloneness as I belong to my life. There is no house like the house of belonging. <laughs> okay, let's, um, yeah, let's look at each other for just like a quick second. <laughs> and let's reach our arms out to the side. It's gonna be behind us and we'll tip this way and we'll tip that way. And we'll reach up, take a little stretch. And then let's take our hands and set them on top of our heart and drop our head down, honoring our practice and honoring each other too. Happy one year Zoomiversary. 